come. The other part of velvet martini, stay tuned, we'll be up in short. Hello! Oh, how are you doing? Hey. Oh my goodness, it's great to be here. I'm excited to be here. Um, let's get the show going on. Let's get started. All right, thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Corey Rosen and you are listening to the Story Podcast. Today I have on a super awesome guest, Miss Big Mama. A Las Vegas transplant, Melanie Verde is excited to be a part of the Central PA music scene, especially in the Lancaster area. She was recently part of the 2022 East Pete Summer Festival, sitting in with local blues and rock bands at various events while working as a studio session vocalist. During one of her earliest shows in Vegas, Melanie brought the house down with her dynamic vocal range and was affectionately named Big Mama due, her, due to her powerful performance. She still uses it today as an homage to her blues and gospel background. Melanie's Las Vegas debut came after a chance encounter in an elevator at the Rio Casino, an overheard conversation from the casino manager regarding an act that had to be canceled at the last minute turned a weekend vacation into a full-time gig at the Rooftop Lounge. Never shy of a challenge, this provided the opportunity Big Mama was looking for to combine music, fashion, and dynamic interactive stage performances, as well as impersonations of Diana Ross, Tina Turner, and Whitney Houston. Big Mama and the Velvet Martinis are a well-rounded music ensemble of professional musicians with a passion for uncompromising performance. How are you doing today, Anne? Excellent. <laughs> excellent. I'm, 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 I'm excellent. I think it's excellent, and I'm here. And I'm glad I'm here with you, Corey. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, excited to have you, I'm too. I'm very excited. So tell me, where did this all begin for you? Where did the love of music come from for you? You're uh, originally from Las, Las Vegas, or? Oh, that's a story in itself. But, um, but originally, how music started for me, how music, outside of the... Um, church music that I grew up in, and the gospel and that choral kind of just soul kind of music. Um, I really started in uh, probably I would have to say Hawaii. Mm. I really um, did. I got with some group of musicians over there um, and we just started playing um, some kind of covers. And since I was dating uh, the bass player, um, always it seems like somebody in the band has a girlfriend that they just put in front of the microphone and just sing. And, and I was just lucky to have the experience to get in there and just start singing at small clubs and I went to bigger clubs and then, you know, cut my teeth out there as, as we all do as musicians, mm -hmm. pubs and bars. And then um, had an opportunity in Vegas, which was a great opportunity, opened doors for me. Then I started doing the impersonations of the Tina Turner, the Whitney Houston, and the Diana Rosses, and that was just amazing. And then my career brought me to Maryland, um, where I played Fells Point, Baltimore, and played a lot of those gigs and places, and then moved here to Lancaster. I love the place, I love the musicians here, and then I end up uh, being here about a year and a half with my husband. We bought his mom's house and um, gave me the opportunity to do some interior designing with it. And then we looked at each other and said, let's get this music thing going here. Mm. And that, there it is. So <laughs> you do impersonations. Where, where did that come from? Uh, why? Why? Great. Great question. So um, when I was in Vegas and we were doing cover, cover material, just regular cover material, a lot of the material on my set list was Whitney Houston and Tina Turner. And so which... A lot of the audience loved that part of it. And I, I had a gentleman who came up to me and said, hey, why don't you do that as a show? And I said, well, that's actually a great idea. And so I started learning a little more. Tina Turner started watching her videos, catching her mannerisms, um, interviews and everything, and um, started really curtailing a show just particularly on her. And then I had a, a show, studied Whitney Houston and her mannerisms, her dress and everything else. And did the same exact thing, but just, you know, different styles. And got booked for a lot of those. And then someone said, what about Diana Ross? And then I ended up doing the same thing. So, yeah. So, over, how many impersonations do you do, do you have? I got hired to do uh, Marilyn Monroe. So, <laughs> well, you know, um, it would depend. Um, I've done Peggy Lee, which is some kind of um, craziness. At that time, I was doing a lot of different kind of you know, uh, impersonations because I was just about the music, and and the audience more would love it. At the time, they really liked it. 
So you mentioned um, studying the mannerism, studying uh, the dress. Yeah. How would you get those dresses? Because you've got a fabulous dress on right now. Yes, yes. I, I started having a collection. So I started uh, going to vintage stores. And then um, I would go to these vintage stores, but they wouldn't have show dresses. They would have, you know, something you'd wear to a wedding. Right. A bridesmaid's dress, uh, you know, just something, blah, blah. So then I had to start sewing, you know, and, and of course I grew up sewing, I, I love to sew. But then I would get these dresses, take them apart, put them back together with furs and gems and everything else and stuff. And then that took time off because, you know, you, you want to perform, you don't want to mm -hmm. sit there doing that. So I started going to vintage stores in Vegas and I started going to Phoenix and I started collecting them. Then it was about the labels because I wanted a vintage dress, but I wanted it to be a Ralph Lauren kind of dress or... Um, it, hopefully, I can find a Chanel. Hopefully, right. but you know, but it, then it became about. I actually am holding a 1942 dress, and that to me was more than all the other things because it was like a treasure, like a baseball card to somebody. Mm. Then I started to say, well, I like that dress because in 1942 this was going on. So then I started connecting it like that. So. Tell me a little bit about this dress. I'm really curious because that, that obviously you can't go into the store and buy one of those. Yes. So, all right. So, all right. So, this is um, a faux red uh, leather tube dress I have on. This is, I always have something. I always have a label. So, this is my label, little Ralph Lauren that I have. This is faux as well, faux jacket, you know, with, with this. And the, this is very inexpensive. But the vintage piece, because I always have a vintage piece, and this is a cute little Ralph Lauren, and this is a 1972 album bracelet. Really? So, yeah, so it's like all about little vintages pieces. These boots were, uh, got these are 1972 with the Relic suede. This is a collection, a vintage collection. Asian, you know, could be like 1962, you know, but I make sure that it has some sort of label on it. That way you can identify it and know exactly, you know, track it to see, you know, the history on it and sometimes on the value. Yeah. And then you have the feathers and is there yeah. earrings or they're, yeah, they're earrings. That's yeah. so wild. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So I was um I was a canine police canine police officer in the navy. So when I joined the navy, I did a lot of traveling. Um, one place in particular, um, I went. I was in the Philippines, New Manila. And have you been to the Philippines? I am. I am not, but I know of the place. Right. It's like a thirty-two hour flight. Really, from here, from yeah, it's, it's far. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Someone will correct me, but let me tell you, it's more than six. And and, and you, you get on a plane and you go there, and it's just a whole different world. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful, and there's places that are really poverty-stricken. Mm. Then you go to their karaoke bars, and these people are karaoke. I mean, they, they, make, they make us over here look a little silly sometimes with the Frank Sinatra and a lot of things. They, I mean, they nail it. And, and I went over there, and... I went up there and sang a Diana Ross song, and I can't remember. And this Korean lady pulled me aside and said, um, I want you to do um, a, a Korean song, a, a Korean song for me. And then she taught me an actual Korean song. So when I went to Hawaii and I met this cocktail lounge and these uh, Japanese and Korean uh, tourists are coming in, because this was a part-time job that I had, I used to sing Korean songs, and people would never forget that. That's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. So, uh, you were in the Navy. How long was that for? Uh, I was in for about, about nine, nine half years. Nine and a half years. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And did you do? I'll let you take a drink of water. Did you do your uh, music during that, or was that separate? Um, I, I, yeah. Some of my posts that I, I did some music. Yeah, I. It, sometimes it's hard um, when you're in the enlisted ranks, you're over there to do a job. Right. And trying to find a guitar player in the sand, sometimes kind of hard. No, not <laughs> quite. Drums. <laughs> so, so people that you would get with over there, you know, you would just sing along, sing to some kind of album or, you know, some kind of music getting on. And then sometimes you can get together with an acoustic act and, and jam into some kind of enlisted club. But it was kind of hard. You know, you know, a gig over there was just, you know, getting together and, and gigging out. Um, but back over here in the U.S., um, yeah, I gig probably once or twice, yeah. Nice. Yeah, pretty cool. So and here's a question I like to ask all Army vets or uh, U.S. military vets because there's always a story. Yeah. Uh, what's, <laughs> 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 what's, what's one of the uh, funniest or 
uh, things that ever happened in the military for you? Ah, uh, uh, that's a funny story. Or um, fun. Fun story. Um, well, one of the fun stories um, over there is um, when I when I joined in the list, I had no idea what I was doing. I just thought I was just going to go and just travel the world, lay on the beaches, and, you know, just have a great fun. So my first duty station, um, everybody was getting their orders for the duty station, and I looked at my duty station, and I'm like, oh, darn, everybody's getting boats, and everybody's getting to stay home, and I'm going to Antigua. And I was like, really? You're going to go, you know, Caribbean. So, right, right. You're, you're, you know, times are hard for you. But And I remember I went there, and, and I was scared. I was so young, and I'm around this base, and I walked through a warehouse, and I could hear somebody playing an electric guitar. And I stopped, and I looked, and I opened the door, and the guy looked at me, and I looked at him, and then there was some other guy on drums. And they said, please be a singer. <laughs> and I said, yeah, 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 please be able to play. And it was just like... Three musicians getting together in the middle of the world, you know, and climbing. And the song that I sang was, uh, 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 it was a Crystal Gale song, and I can't even remember it. But we sang that song all night, because that's the only song we could, they could play, and I wow. And that was probably something that I never forgot, that, yeah, through that's, the Navy. That's awesome. Yeah. So when you became uh, a citizen again, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I'm back, yeah. yeah right. uh, what was that process like for you? Did you know you wanted to go right into music immediately, or was um, that like a process? Yeah, you know, it, it's always a process. It's always a process because when I got back, I had a family, you know. So I'm 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 raising kids and I'm having my daytime job. So I'm trying to stay focused on that because that was the responsibility then. So I didn't do it for a while. And I remember um, meeting um, my, my, my husband now, and he sat back and said, you had an amazing musical career. Let's, let's do it again. Mm -hmm. He said, let's do it here in Lancaster, but let's do it the right way. Because back then, I mean, a gig's a gig. I mean, I remember playing at places where you, you're a musician. I, I, yes. and you play places where you don't want to put that on your resume. That's right. Yeah, but, but you play because it's the passion. You love music. I mean, that's why we do Cutting it. Cutting teeth. That's why we do Cutting our teeth. And, and, and then he, my husband said, let's just do it the right way. And that's why we're here. We're doing it the right way. We're meeting networking. We're meeting great people. And I want to provide a show. Mm. And I want people to walk away and say, I just saw the most incredible band. And, and, and the singer, wow. And that's what I want people to walk away with. So we're kind of restarting your music career here. Mm -hmm. What has that been like? You uh, got together a band. Yes. What is... You know, give me the rundown on that. I'll give you the rundown. So, so my concept when I um, started looking for musicians, I said the number one thing that I want is no ego. Mm. I know, that's, that's kind of hard. And 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 I want them to be confident on you know on on of course their instrument, not you know and you know understand it. And I right. said I want a funk band. So so I reached out and 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 then I found. A guitar player, his name's Dan Mitchell, who lives in Hershey, from California, Ooh, just meaty player. Then I said, I need something to go with this this, this meaty player. And then I, I found this uh, bassist, electric bassist, Ryan Surbell, just holds the bottom, just whoo, beautiful. And then I said, okay, I need something else to go with it. So I found this musical, multi-talented gentleman, his name is Matt Delusia. Not only he plays percussion, I can move on the keyboard. Yeah. Great, great guy. He, a great guy. He's a great guy. But then I, I think you might know. Him. I know, I do. I know, I know, because your eyes went back and yeah, forth. Yeah. And then I said, I need something to put this whole thing together. And I said, I need, a, I need an amazing drummer. And then I got Dre Verde on my drum. Great. And he's versatile. He plays country, RB, funk. I mean, I versatile. But then I need something, the cherry for this whole thing. And that's Pete Skella. Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh my God, can we do yeah. that? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Man. Love Pete. So, so I have this, this nuclear funky fusion of these musicians. So we attack these cover songs like... Incredible. And so that's my funk band. 
Then we move over to my jazz band, Susan. Oh, you have two bands. I have two. Oh, I don't know that. <laughs> got a whole band. Mm -hmm. Got a whole it's, army of bands I have a there. Whole army. So I wanted to do something that's a little bit um, authentic for jazz. I wanted to go back through the decades. I wanted to go from the 20s, sing about the 20s, all that music, the 30s, 40s, 60s, all the way to contemporary. And I wanted to do a story about it. So um, when we were staying, I, I had a gig at Mickey's mm -hmm. in Lynn Linnitz. And the show was called Decades in Jazz. So yeah, so I came out in a 1920s frilly dress with the headband and the fan and the gloves and sang from the 1920s. Yeah, like wonderful, marvelous. Then it gets better. It gets better. It gets there's more. And then uh, Wait, oh, before you go, did you have the transatlantic Atlantic accent as well? No. 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 Uh, the trans uh, it was a transatlantic accent that the ones that they always did the movies in back in the day. Oh. No. No. Okay. No. 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 Then there's more. Okay. So, but this is this will get to to that point. Um, so my second set, I started from the uh, '40s, '50s, and then that was the A Train. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and that costume dealt with you know the um, the A frame skirt with the plaids and the red gloves and the the hair and the little you know um, we'll call them square pillbox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so pretty cool, pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. And then and then the audience was like. What's the next set? And then, of course, I you know change into a, another gown, which was a, a burgundy gown. So, I gave my what I want to do is I want to give them a show, a visual show, so they can visually see the music and how it connects. And then I want them to come away from and say, I just saw a show. Mm -hmm. That was a pretty good show. And then that's what I want to do here. And that's my jazz band. So I have um, Kirk Reese on keyboards. And you might, you're I, think, keyboard I, I know that name. Yes. Yeah, you're, you're a keyboard player as mm -hmm. well. And um, I have uh, uh, Ray, my bass player for my other band, um, um, and I have Matt, my drummer again, and then I have this new gentleman um, uh, that I'm featuring this gig that's coming up, um, and his name is Richie Rags Regalia. Regalia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It plays like David Sanborn. Yeah, pretty cool. So let's talk about this next gig that you got coming yes, up. Yes. So um, May 13th, um, I have a gig coming up, um, and it's going to be in the Mulberry Arts Center. Uh, so what we wanted to do was we were looking for a venue to have a jazz show for date night mm. um, or Mother's Day weekend. Mother's Day will be the next day. So what we did is um, I got musicians together, and we're going to do a jazz show. And it's going to be in this speakeasy. We're going to build it at the Mulberry Arts Center mm -hmm. on the second floor. Speakeasy. We're going to be selling tickets there. We have fifteen dollar tickets just to be in there, just to have a great time. General admission, all the way up to the VIP lounge seating, which is going to be pretty cool because there's only going to be five comfortable, intimate couches surrounding the stage. That's cool. Yeah, and then That's I'll have cool. the dresses, the the costumes of the period, having a great time. And then um, I think we're going to start the show at seven. And doors will open up at six o'clock, and the tickets are going to be at the event right. So, uh, can people expect your jazz band or the impersonation band? Uh, they'll be expecting the jazz band. Jazz band. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, we're going to change up some some newer the music. Like, um, um, you ever heard of the band called um, Postmaster? Um, uh, Postmodern Jukebox. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, uh, one of the songs is Creep. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so that's one of the songs I want to do. We're going to try to transfer some of the new contemporary, you know, and, and do some jazzy style, you know, bring a little funk to it as well. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you have this new band. Is there anything, did you ever want to write originals at all? <sighs> that's another thing. But yes, we're working on that. Um, I, I was talking to um, a few um, writers, actually, online, songwriters, and I was trying to connect them. They sent me some of their music samples and stuff, and I think I want to. I want to try at it. Um, right in the beginning of COVID, um, remember COVID? No one's leaving the house. Yeah, I'll see the anniversary is coming up very soon. Yeah. Tomorrow, actually. It'll, yeah. March, yeah. March 13th, yeah. I already think that's time. So my husband and I, we um, got guitars and we went on, we sat on our porch and just played guitar. And that's what we did. And I continued to play. And now I want to um, start um, 
doing a lot more of that um, playing in my jazz kind of stuff. So yeah, so you'll be seeing some of that too. Very nice. Yeah. Well, we're kind of hitting the halfway point in this interview. We have a, a jam session from you at McCleary's Pub with a, a few of great musicians. Oh, yes. Yes. yes, 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 yes. We have Mike Asafi on uh, guitar, a great friend of mine. I know Mike Asafi, you know Mike Asafi. Yes, He's an incredible right. guitarist, Very incredible right. shredder. So we're going to listen to a little bit of a live version of that. So with that said, this is Big Mama yes. at McCleary's. The whole other podcast. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the whole other sure. podcast. So, um, moving on to some of the questions I like to ask all my guests. Mm-hmm. What are some of the funniest or worst shows or things that ever happened to you on a show? Um, well, okay. I have one, and, and my husband could witness this, this, this foo pas. Um, I was in a, um, a club, a gig, um, singing on stage, and I'm rocking it out. I am literally rocking out places back. And I threw my head back, and my wig fell off. <laughs> he, he sees over there, he's coming and, and what do you do as a performer? What do you do? Come on. Keep moving. What you, would you, you record? Uh, if my wig fell off? If your wig fell if off. If my wig fell off, it's, it didn't happen. I'll keep going. There you go. Yeah. So I threw, grabbed it. Put it on lopsided and continued to sing that song, and 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 I was embarrassed just for a little bit until I looked up and everybody's like, yeah, yeah. and 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 then I it ended up being pretty cool. Yeah, and that's what you get to do if anything goes wrong. Just make it part of an act. Exactly. You know, just you know, use it, uh, turn it into a pom pom. You know. Exactly. <laughs> throw it out there, throw it back at you. Yeah. But yeah, right. so that was yeah, that was pretty cool. What do you think is a, is a venue that you want to go to eventually? What where are some of the bigger places you want to expand to? Um, you've hit Nike Black Box, which is a big one already. Wow, well, I I want to feel I I want to go big. I want to go eventually on stage and just grab a Grammy. Really? That's where I am. I that's where my mindset is. It's like I, I there's great music out there, and there's so many great musicians that. You, you try every day getting up doing your music for that, you know? I mean, so that's that's the goal. There's no venue. I love doing what I do. I mean, I'll play um, Starbucks. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> right. you know I've always, right. but, you know, just to get the music out there. Yeah, yeah one person, 500. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not there. So, of, of all of this knowledge, what is one thing that you wish you knew when you first started as opposed to now? Uh, I think the most important thing is a balance of family and career. I mean, back then, there was a time where it was just, you know, gig, 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 gig. And, and my home life was just, you know, they were just, they were there. They were there, you know, and, and just having that kind of balance. Um, yeah. Now I have that kind of balance, and it's just working a lot better. Yeah. So, if you can... Here's one thing. If you could meet any of your uh, old jazz icons, or if you could go back and meet any but any one of your person person meters, who would who would you meet? Wow, because there's so many of them. There are so many. Yeah, um, I would probably it would probably be Billie Holiday. Really? Yeah, and it's, she was just such a just a lost soul. But you hear her music, and it's just, just, just screaming out, just longing. So yeah, I would just want to just meet her, meet her. Billie Holiday is a is a. Oh gosh, what do I even begin with? Like that kind of a person. Yeah, but Billie Holiday, she was um, born in Philadelphia. Yeah. She was raised in Baltimore, and she was one of the, one of the jazz female jazz singers. I mean, and. Her life was just a tragic end. She got into heroin, mm-hmm. and um, her career just ended up being, at that time, she was in and out of jail because drugs back then were, you know, yep. were, were yep. you know, really illegal. And, and it just she had just a horrible, horrible, horrible life, and it just came out in a lot of her songs. They really should make a movie about her. I think so. I think they probably, I think they probably have. I know they made one about Aretha Franklin. That was yes, very good. So, what are... Um, you're a vocalist, you're a performer. What are some of the techniques that you're still trying to perfect as a performer? 
Wow. Mm. I love connecting with my audience. Love connecting with my audience. And I'm trying to figure out ways where I can connect with them more. Um, I want to, with the shows, I want when people come in and the show starts at 7. I want them to be entertained from 7 o'clock to 10. And um, we were, my husband and I, we were talking about if we can find jugglers, mm. fire eaters, something where it just brings the show to an element of here we are, let's, you know, let's sit back and get entertained. So um, that's what I'm, yeah, that's going on right now. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I just saw uh, Lilith's Fire and Ice. I don't know if you went to Lilith's Fire and Ice. No, recently. I saw it on Facebook. Uh, cool. Yeah, Aaron Vaughn yeah. was there. Mm -hmm. It'd be really cool because he does he does his whips to music. It'd be really cool if he did a live yeah. performance with that on fire. Yeah, that'd be it'd be that's, it's entertaining. Yes, exactly. And that's the things we want to do. We want to find these acts that you know to open up with. So it's like this. Wow. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Well, he's coming back for. Uh, Oh, what is it? Run fair, and, yeah, and uh, check so check him out. Yeah, yeah. Check him he's out. from uh, he's from originally from around here too. So that's pretty cool. Very cool. Well, where can people find you at? I know you have a website. We do have a website. Um, uh, one of the websites we're always going to be under Big Mama Music. Mm -hmm. it's, that's our umbrella for for all of this stuff going on. Um, one of it would be MelanieVerday um, dot com is my personal uh, website. For the jazz side, um, we also have the Big Mama and the Velvet Martinis website, and you know that's for all of our band, all of our band business. And Melanie Verde is M E L A N I E V E R D I. That is correct. Dot com. That, dot com. There we go. That's correct. And is there anything else you want to say before we sign off? I want to say thank you so much for having me on this show. It's of course. Cool. Um, we have something for you. Well, do you? Oh, yes, we do. Yes, we do. We have something special for you. Yes. And, um, I, yes, we do. And Mo, he's a great guy over here. So you're, you make music continue with yeah. music. What you do here, it's so cool. And well, um, really we're cool. a big fan of yours. So this is, you're uh, now an affiliated member of the Big Mama and the Velvet Martinis. Thank you. This is really cool. This feels like a, almost like a jersey. It's, I really yeah. like this. Yeah, so, you know, this thank you so much for stuff. having of you know, course. me, you know, and the band wants to say, you know, you're part of us now. Thank oh, you very yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. It fits. It does fit. It fits very nicely. Although, I, I don't know why I put it over my dress shirt, but you know what? Who cares? I didn't realize you, had, you got some guns up there. Yeah, well, <laughs> Now we go. <laughs> and um, also we have the Jazz and Blues. This is the flyer for the May um, 13th um, gig. It's a Jazz and Blues. Going to be a great time. BYOB. Please bring your own beverages and food. Incredible. Go on Eventbrite. Um, tickets starting at $15 up to the VIP seating. Um, it's going to be a great show. Well, with all that said, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. And you can find, well, actually, you can find out more about me at CoreyRosenProductions.com. I am Corey Rosen. This is the Story Podcast. There you can find out more about me, the projects I do, and the podcast and all 130-some uh, guests that I've had on before you guys, and all the guests that I have on next. Upcoming, we have Kevin Whitaker, who is an indie rock artist from around here. He's a dad musician, and he does some incredible cool stuff around here. This Tuesday, we have Dan Mayer. He is a recording engineer from around the area, and he's done a lot of cool stuff with a really cool musicians. This Friday, we have Dustin LeBlanc. He is the, he's the he been an artistic director of, uh, of West Shore Theater. He is a, well, he's currently managing director of West, West, West Shore Theater, and he's been an artistic director of many theatrical uh, productions, so I'm excited to get tied nice. into the theater world with him. Yes. And this Saturday, we have our, my interview with Night Out Country Band. They're a, a country band out of Indiana. And so we get to hear about them and all the cool things they get to do with, like, the ISSA Awards and the International Singer-Songwriter Association that they get to do over in Indiana. Nice. And then this... Well, that's all I got for this week. What? <laughs> oh, yeah, only that. Only, yeah, only that. Only that. <laughs> You can find out more about that at CoreyRosenProductions.com. That's C-O-R-Y-R-O-S-E-N Productions.com. With all that said, I got. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. And we will see you guys later. Bye. Bye.